Well, I'm Derek. That's Ben. My dad owns Broken Bill Outfitters, and we basically make any sort of decoy from diving decoys up to goose decoys down to your mallard decoys. I'm going to just walk through the process of how to make one of them from body and head. Then I've got a couple of demonstrations of what they should turn out to look like. But first we'll start with the board in the bottom of the mold to put screws and stuff into when we go to assemble them. And then we've got 2 pound foam and 10 pound foam. The 10 pound foam is used for the heads, the 2 pound foam is used for the body because the body gets covered in a specialty coating. Yeah, they're pretty much indestructible. I've done plenty of tests to destroy them. I've hit them with mallets, hammers, we've shot them, all sorts of different things to try and break them. I am pouring in the first part of a two part urethane foam. This is the foam. The part A is the activator to get it to actually expand. And for a body we use roughly seven ounces of the part A and seven ounces of part B. And then this is the activator to basically get it to expand. So I'll just take a stir stick and get it really mixed up so that it expands and hardens properly. You think of any questions, Kyle? You can ask. Yeah. And Ben's just putting in. The so we'll go in. Trying to get this wooden board to stick to prevent the foam from skating out the bottom, which is proven easier said than done at this point. It's also oak, so it might not want to. That's why I'm still stirring it. Oh, come on. Might have to just hammer it on. We were running four lines of RDKs and then two lines of the old Curtis plastic ones. Got pour it into the mold. Gotta try and hurry because running out of time before it expands. And then the piece goes on. Four C clamps on it to keep it from blowing out the sides. This is a diamond body. So we've got two different types of diver bodies and three different types of diver bodies on a type of mallard mold. On head wipes we've got canvas backs, bluebills and red heads, gold eye, ring necks, mallards, buff head. It'll sit for about a half hour or so before it gets pulled. So the body is done, next is for the head. More heads and bodies. I mean we've got bluebills, redheads, canvas back, golden eye, mallards, eider, scolder, two different types of scolders, magna mallard heads, buffy heads, wood ducks, although those are a pain to make. But this time it's going to be 
10 pound foam. So this is the uh, part B. We'll put in roughly two ounces of the part B, then two ounces of the part A. Again, A is the activator that will make it expand. And these have a lot of pressure pushing out on the mold. That is why those C-clamps are so important. This used to be Toledo Decoys out of Ohio and then one of my dad's friends bought it off of him. Didn't really do too much with it and then when my dad was looking at getting a new job he offered my dad the basically just the molds then it was up to us to make it into a company and now we've got decoys all over the country. Got some in Alaska, New York, Maine, the Great Lakes, everywhere. And for the head we'll just put a nail in the bill. It'll make it a little bit stronger so that way if you bang it up against the bolt it shouldn't break. The mold itself will heat up as the foam expands, it'll create a chemical reaction, it'll put off heat. But other than that, it'll just basically push out the air that's left in the mold. So after they come out of the mold, we'll get a handful of them made, we'll put them in a bin, and we'll take them to a local shop that will coat them. This stuff is extremely durable. After they're coated, we'll prime them, paint them, this is a, one of our Bluebill decoys. We put on a Trex keel. It's a little bit heavier, so they sit a little bit better in the water. The foam decoys do tend to ride a lot better than the plastic ones. They're a little bit heavier. They ride more like a true duck. And then we do brand the keels on the bottom just to make sure that people know where the decoys are from. Everybody will hand paint them, I'll hand paint them, my sister will hand paint them, my dad will hand paint them, and for the most part my grandpa will do a lot of the painting because he's got plenty of free time. Alright, so we got a decoy here, it's the Broken Bill decoy, it's just the non-coated foam decoy. This one was shot at 25 yards with 3 inch twos. You can tell there's some pretty good damage to the sides and the tops, but regardless it'll still float. But once you get into the coated ones, you'll notice they all just bounced right off. The only damage you took is to the head and the bills, which are replaceable. But mostly everything just stays intact and then you still can't even squish them. Just regardless, the coating saves it. So here's a couple of the finished decoys. We've got a Drake Mallard here. We also make the Hen Mallards. This is the standard size one. We do have Magnum ones. You got the Redhead. This is what a lot of people will order is a standard body with either a bluebill head or a redhead head and they will paint them themselves and if they don't we end up painting them. Uh, we also got a canvas back here and a golden eye. Both look phenomenal on the water. The keels really help them to get some good action on windy and wavy days. And for the most part these decoys, you can run them in different patterns. You can have bluebills and redheads mixed together. You can run golden eyes mixed in with them. The way we have them set up right now is we just have all bluebills in one line, all canvas back in another, golden eyes in another. It's just, it's easier to keep them all organized when you have them set up the same. We do have one line that has multiple different species. We've got a couple scoters, eiders, and bluebills on that line. So the long lines are roughly 100 feet. We do about a 10 to 20 foot lead from anchor to the first clip for the decoys. And then with the clips for the decoys, it depends on how deep you're hunting. 
if you're hunting at 20 feet of, in 20 feet of water, you got roughly 60 feet to work with for spreading out decoys. We usually run them five to six feet apart, depending on how deep or shallow we are. And then that is the process on how we make the broken bill decoys.